All right, this is fifth grade, module two, lesson 27. And in this lesson, students are going to be dividing decimal dividends by two-digit divisors. Uh, we're going to be using estimation. Essentially, though, uh, students at this point in the game are going to be using that standard algorithm for dividing decimals. Uh, let's get working on this. So I started with this one because I thought this first problem was really interesting. Parents and teachers, I think, heads up, a little bit of troubleshooting. I think a lot of our students are going to want to do this, and they need to be they need to be uh, reminded or taught that no 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 that would be wrong. That uh, I mean, where they're coming from is they've always been taught that the smaller number goes outside and the bigger number goes inside, and and it kind of makes sense because this order matches this order, but that would be wrong. And what students need to constantly be reminded is that first number always goes in the house, the second number always goes out of the house. I don't remember the right word for the house, the math term, so we're just gonna leave it at that. And then uh, division, uh, go ahead and start dividing. Um, I'm gonna use 30 as my estimation, so I'm gonna think of 30, 60, 90, 120, and then of course I'm gonna do my actual work over here well, seven ones cannot be divided amongst 28 groups, so we're going to add a decimal and raise that decimal straight up, and we're going to think of this as 70 tenths. And 70 tenths looks like it could be divided amongst 28 groups with two in each group. That's my estimation over here. So over here on scratch paper, and I'm going to not do that problem, I'm going to do 28 multiplied by 2 because that's my estimation and I get 56. Hmm. I'm wondering if 50, if we could get closer to 70 than 56. So it looks like I'm going to have to try 3 just in case. So I'm going to do 28 times 3 and 2 times uh, 3 times 8 is 24 carry the 2 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 more is 8, so that's 84. So 84 is too big. So, yep, 2 was the proper quotient. So that's 56 down here. We're going to use subtraction, and we get 14, uh, and technically that would be 14 tenths as our leftover. So I'm going to extend my division a little bit, and I'm going to bring that, down that 0, because now we have... 140 hundredths divided amongst 28 groups. It looks like, hmm, if I go here, it looks like it's going to go in four times. Well, we know four times. Oh, no, we don't know four times. So let's go over here on scratch paper. Let's do 28 times four. Parents and teachers, students hate doing this stuff over here on scratch paper, but I try and encourage them to do it. I also encourage them not to erase their scratch work. Leave it. You might need it later in the problem. So anyway, four times eight is 32, carry the three. Four times two is eight plus three is 11. So that's 112. Hmm. I'm wondering if we could get closer to 140, so we better try 28 times 5. So 5 times 8 is 40, carry the 4. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 4 is 14, so there's our 140. Hey, I'm glad I tried. 112 just didn't feel like it was close enough. So I, I needed to try, even though our estimation over here said really it should have been about four times. I'm glad I tried. So we know that the quotient is going to be five because it says so right here. So that's 140. And we have zero left over. So our answer is 25 hundredths or 0.25. Now, it's customary to have that leading zero, but it's not absolutely required. So here, big old huge problem. We get 604.8 divided by 36. Hmm, that 36, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use 35 as our estimation. So I'm going to make that blue 35, and then 70 is our next one, because 35 and 35 is 70. Add another 30 is 100, so add 35 is 105. 
Add 30 gives us 135, but add another 5 gives us 140. I'm going to start right there. Well, and then I could do one more. That's easy, 175. So there's my estimation. Now let's think about this. 6 hundreds divided amongst 36, we can't do. So we're going to think of this as 60 tens, and it really looks like that's only one time. So our quotient is 1. We could do that math in our head. So it's 36, and when we subtract, we get 24. And sure enough, 24 is less than 36, so we're golden. So now I'm going to bring down that 4. So now we have 244, and 244 ones. Hmm, if I look over here, looks like I'm going to have to keep going. So let's see, 75 plus 35. Well, 175 plus 30 is 205. That gives us, plus another 5 is 210. 210 plus 35 is really easy. That's 245. Hey, hey, look at that. Look at that. We're close enough right there. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, my goodness. Let's go over here on scratch paper and check it out. 36 times 7. Well, 7 times 6 is 42. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 4 more is 5. Ooh, 7 is too much, because we get 252. We only wanted 244. So that means we have to downgrade. 36 times 6. So that means 6 times 6 is 36. Carry the 3. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3 is 21. So we get 216. So that's our proper quo uh, quotient there. So it's going to be 6. 216. Now I subtract, and I get 28. And since 28 is less than 36, that means we're golden. And so now I'm going to bring down that 8, because instead of thinking of this as 28 ones, we're going to think of this as 288 tenths, which means this decimal, we need to put a decimal straight up right there. So we got 288. Well, going over here in our, our list, um, let's see, 245 plus another 35 gives us 280. So I'm going to stop right there. And let's see, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, here's 7. We better try. Let's do 36 times 8. So 8 times 8 is 64, carry the 6. The 8 times 3 is 24, plus 6 is 304. Ooh, too big, too big. So 8's no good, so 7 is what we want. So we're going to put the 7 up there, and we know it's 252 because it says so way over there. And we subtract, and we get 36. What? Now check this out. You know, I said, what? Right? That's because I got 36, and we're dividing by 36, and that's no good. But I thought 8, so 7 is not enough. And I thought 8 wasn't, you know, like 8 was too big. But that, check it out. That's called metacognition, parents and teachers. When I uh, am thinking about stuff, and I'm going back, and I'm saying, does that make sense? Uh, and in this case, it doesn't make sense because I accidentally multiplied by 38 instead of 36. So I need to go 36 times 8 just to verify. 24 and 4 is 288. Hey, that's exactly what we wanted. So what I need to do is I need to do some serious erasing here. So I need to erase that 7 because it turns out 8 is good enough. And we're going to erase all this stuff down here because it turns out when I'm dividing, let's see, uh, 36 into 288, that's 8. That's perfect. 8 is perfect. So I'm going to put the 8 there. Here's my 288, and I get 0. Whew! An important thing that I uh, want to highlight to you parents and teachers is that constant concept of going back and forth and checking. Does when I subtract, am I less than what I'm dividing by? If the answer is yes, then I might be okay. Not necessarily, but 
Boy, when I saw the 36 down here, that told me I goofed up somewhere. Nice, nice example of metacognition. So here, I think you get the idea of division. So we're just going to kind of map this out a little bit. It says, in science class, students watered a plant with the same amount of water. Whenever you're talking about equal portions, that usually means you're going to be multiplying or dividing. So that's kind of a heads up. It's a key word, but, you know, be careful with key words. But when we see the word same, it kind of suggests we might be dealing with multiplication and division. And they did that for 28 consecutive days. If the student used a total of 23.8 liters of water over the 28 days, how many liters of water did they use each day? So the idea is you have 23.8 liters, and we want to chop that 23.8 liters into 28 groups. And so we want to know how much is one of those groups. So that means we're going to do 23.8 divided by 28. I'm going to speed this along a little bit, and we're going to have to go all the way up to division of 238 tenths. So we're going to think of this as 238 tenths. And I'm going to think of 30, 60, 90, 120, 150. I'm going up by 30s because 28 is pretty close to 30. 180, 210, 240. So my estimation, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. My estimation is going to be 8. So let's see what happens. 28 times 8, 64. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 6 is 22. That's pretty good. So there's my 8, 224. Now I'm going to subtract, and I get 14. And since 14 is less than 28, I'm probably go golden here. And then I'm going to extend my bar, and I'm going to bring down that 0. And we get 140. Now if I look over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm going to stop at 120. That seems about right. So 28 times 4. So 28 times 4 is 32. And then 8 times 4, I mean 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3 is 11. So that, mm, I better try 5. 28 times 5, 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 4 is 104. Ooh, I'm glad I tried that 5. So the answer is five in the quotient, and that's perfect. So what's the question? How many liters of water did they use? And they used 0.85 liters. All right, now the second question is how many milliliters did they use? Well, let's see. 0.85 liters is equal to how many milliliters? Well, we know that there's 1,000 milliliters in a liter. So when we think of 85, 0.85 liters, we could think of it as 0 0.850 liters. And so that tells us it's going to be 850 milliliters. Now, how did I do that? I'm thinking of a liter. Let's think of a liter. All right. And that liter, one liter, is equal to a thousand milliliters. And so I know, like an example of cut it in half, so a half a liter is equal to 500 milliliters. So I'm using logic. And, and so using that logic, I can see, hmm, how is this connected to this. How are they related? Oh, it's multiplied by a thousand. So take this, multiply by a thousand, gives me 850 milliliters. I think I just answered that question. That's good. And this one uh, I just wanted to share with you because I thought it was really interesting because students are likely to be able to get the problem without using any fancy division. 
So a seamstress has a piece of cloth that's three yards long. Okay, so here is my three yards. And this happens to be 36 inches because it's a yard. And this happens to be 36 inches. And this happens to be 36 inches. So if she cuts these, cuts it into shorter lengths of 16 inches each, how many of the shorter pieces can she cut? Well, we know that 16 plus 16 is 32. So she can cut two of them here, and she has an extra four inches. Then she can cut two of them here, and she has an extra four inches. And I'm going to put this in red to highlight it. And then she can cut two of them here, and then she has an extra four inches. And so how many pieces was she able to cut? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then she's going to have an extra 12 inches of fabric left over. So the answer is six. Now look at that. I did it by drawing a picture. I didn't use division. And parents and teachers, if your students are able to use a, a drawing, or in this case a tape diagram, in a creative way, by all means let them. And if they can do it better than uh, using division, let them do that. And the last one. Jenny filled 12 pitchers uh, with an equal amount. See that equal? That equal means we're probably going to use multiplication or division. The total amount of lemonade in the 12 pitchers was 41.4. So what would the picture look like? The picture is going to look like... Here's our 41.4, and 12 pitchers. Oh well, my goodness, what is 12 pitchers going to look like? Well, I'm going to cut it in half, and then I'm going to cut each of these into thirds. So now I have six pitchers, and then I'm going to cut each one of those in half. So now I have 12 pitchers. And for starters, we want to know one pitcher. So one pitcher is going to be 41.4 divided by 12. But then, once we have that answer, we want to know um, seven pitchers, because it says so right here. So let's see, seven pitchers is going to be one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So th here's our seven. So to map out the strategy, we're going to divide, and that's going to give us one pitcher. And we're going to take that answer and multiply by 7 because we really want the answer of 7 pitchers. And that wraps up 5th grade Module 2 Lesson 27 using that standard algorithm for division.